Hey, what is going on? Matt O'Leary back with another video here to recap day three for the New York Jets. Thank you to everyone who watched along with us on the live stream. It was an absolute blast hanging out with Ryan and Green Bean for all three days. And after streaming for just about seven hours, I am here to do my reaction to the New York Jets draft picks. Now, they went into this draft or this day of the draft with three picks, two, uh, two in round four, or one in round four, two in round five. I initially believe they, they moved around a lot and they ended up picking five times. And let's start first with the trades and then get into who they actually picked. The first trade back was actually with the New England Patriots. So the Jets had pick 112 in the fourth round. They moved back and get pick 120 and 184 to move back. The Pats trade up for a kicker, which is kind of hilarious, but conversation for another day. Uh, later on, they would trade out of pick 170 with the Raiders and get 204 and 220. They moved down really, really far for this one. I don't know how much I love that one as much as I, I like the first one more than the second one, but we'll talk through it and we'll talk through all these guys that the New York Jets were able to add to their roster on day three. So with the Jets first selection in round four, they select Carter Warren out of Pittsburgh, an offensive tackle. Finally, the New York Jets land an offensive tackle after missing out in round one. They go center in round two, obviously don't have a pick in round three, but they land Warren out of Pittsburgh. Guess where he's from? Patterson, New Jersey, a local product, things you absolutely love to see. He's played both left and right tackle in college. He's viewed as a potential starter down the line, but kind of in a similar mold to Max Mitchell. So last year, the Jets landed Mitchell in the fourth round, and he, even though he had to play right away, that was never really the plan for the New York Jets. And you can never have too much tackle depth or offensive line depth in general. So I'm all about it. Uh, he's a little bit of an older prospect at 24 years old, but he has a seven foot wingspan. And he's a team captain. So that's something that we've seen Joe Douglas look for in the past. Team captains on day three. It seems like there was a, a few years ago. Was it 2020 when he drafted like all team captains? Uh, it's pretty wild, but uh, really not a surprise that they end up going offensive tackle at some point during the draft. They might not be done. They may look to add another veteran to this room at the offensive tackle market. But uh, Carter Warren was the first pick on day three. They weren't done, though, going with the Pittsburgh products. They go Israel Abanaconda coming out of Pittsburgh as well. A running back with just absolutely insane speed. He is a home run hitter if there ever was one. He had 20 rushing touchdowns last year. Can we just think about that for a second? 20 rushing touchdowns just one receiving uh, he also has time as a returner as well so with his good speed uh, and return abilities I like adding that to the mix uh, he didn't have a returning touchdown this year but in 2021 he had one not great as a receiver out of the backfield but um he had over 100 rushing yards in 11 of his games last year. Uh, 439 40-yard dash, 988 RAS score. We're going to talk a lot of RAS scores because today was the day of athleticism for Joe Douglas. If there was ever a theme for the New York Jets in their draft, today's theme, athlete. Really, actually, all th all th three days, they were going high, high, high athletes. 988 RAS score, 439 40-yard dash. Uh, that's pretty quick. Um could this be trouble for Michael Carter and slash or Bam Knight? Potentially, uh, it depends on how quickly Brees Hall is back. But this is now four years in a row where the New York Jets have added a running back in the NFL draft. They did it in 2020 with LaMichael P. Ryan, 2021 Michael Carter, 2022 Brees Hall. And now again in 2023, I absolutely love his speed. Uh, and I thought that was really good value for getting him in the fifth round. I thought he was probably more like a late, very late day two, early day three guy, uh, but they're able to get him uh, in the fifth round. And I do think that he is going to push both those guys, Michael Carter and Bam Knight. Bam, I thought, had a few really good games early, slowed down a little bit. Granted, the offensive line kind of stunk. Michael Carter, weird year for him in 2022. He looked really good as a rookie, uh, was just the yak guy uh, or yards. Yeah, yards after contact, making people miss. He was just doing all different kinds of things, but... Uh, really, really struggled last year, was not very evidently not the same player. Uh, and the Jets get some insurance there. And I'm sure that's going to be a lot of fun for Aaron Rodgers at the quarterback position. The Jets had two selections in round six. First was Zaire Barnes, linebacker out of Western Michigan. Another good athlete has experience playing both inside and out at the linebacker position. He's good in coverage and on special teams. I wouldn't expect him to be 
linebacker three or anything like that. I think this is more uh, more of a special teams ad. And at, I mean, at this point in the draft, that's exactly what it's for, right? Uh, I will say, though, Dan Brugler in his scouting report spoke very highly of him. Uh, he said he's always around the ball due to key reads and speed. He, I mean, coverage ability is a plus from uh, Barnes. That's probably what's got him drafted and what might make him stick on a on an NFL roster. But I think it'll give you value on special teams and potentially, if things go well, a linebacker who can cover in the sixth round. Then the second pick was Jarek Bernard Converse out of LSU. He will play safety at the next level. He played a ton of cornerback. He was pretty much a press corner at LSU, but he's projected to switch to safety at the next level. Pretty much what they did with Jason Pinnock after a year. Remember, they took him uh, at a Pittsburgh and yeah, Pittsburgh in 2021. Uh, and then they were going to move him to safety this past year. Uh, they don't keep him on the roster. The Giants pick him up and he ends up playing meaningful snaps there. Uh, just what makes him so valuable or why he was able to be a draft pick speed four four speed uh, at that position is important. He has an elite vertical, a very good vertical jump and another guy with just an incredible RAS score with a nine seven seven. So the Jets just going again, adding a really good athlete with speed to this defense. That's the key to the Robert Sala defense. They want to fly around. They want to make plays. And at his best, that's what Jarek Bernard Con uh, Converse can do at the next level. And finally, last but certainly not least, round seven, pick 220. How about Zach Kuntz, the tight end out of Old Dominion? One fun name to say, by the way, and that's how it is pronounced, Kuntz. The Ras God. If there was, like, if you look up Ras score in a dictionary, I think his picture comes up. A perfect 10. Perfect 10. He is six foot seven, which is just insanely tall for a tight end, 255 pounds, and at his size, runs a 455 40 yard dash and has a 40 inch vertical. He is definitely a project. So don't like, don't expect him to play meaningful snaps in 2023. This is a long term project, but he projects to be a pass catching big slot, pretty much like a big receiver more than an inline blocking tight end. But at that size, with that speed and that vertical threat, maybe again, best this is best case scenario now, maybe a project red zone jump ball kind of threat there. I don't know if he's ever going to turn into an every down tight end or a tight end one. Again, these are dart throws on day three, but the Jets with these day three dart throws went and bet on athletes. So if you're going to bet on something, they're betting on on these RAS scores and these athletes being able to figure it out and getting coached up. So uh, the Jets finish the NFL draft. With seven picks, they end up getting their seven picks after moving back a couple of times today. We will do a full review of the draft class tomorrow. Just wanted to get on here and do my reaction to the Jets' actual day three draft class. We'll do UF, uh, UDFAs excuse me, tomorrow as well, but that's going to do it for me on my coverage of day three. Thanks so much for tuning in. Once again, I am Matt O'Leary. I'll catch you next time.